I imagine it all began as a boyhood interested in, in astronomy. Looking up at the skies, becoming interested, uh, being filled with wonder at the heavens, trying to learn more about the universe by reading, as well as by looking through small telescopes and binoculars. Fantastic. Tap, tap, tap. Is this thing working? <laughs> One, two, three, four. <laughs> You know the drill. <laughs> Been there, done that, got the t-shirt. <laughs> Mike Bennett, B-E-N-N-E-T-T. -E I started at the academy when I was in high school, 16 years old, in 1960. Mike was one of the presenters at that time, or we call them lecturers, because uh, unlike today, what the uh, presenters did was they actually spoke through the entire show, about 45 minutes or so. Basically, at the age of 16, achieved my life's ambition. Where do you go from there? <laughs> Working at the planetarium, I mean, what could be more cool than that? He had a very relaxed, very easygoing style. I mean, it was something that I, I actually try to emulate nowadays. It was so relaxed that sometimes the shows went a little long, but you knew you were hearing from somebody who really knew his stuff. And that was Mike. He had a very dry sense of humor. And he was full of what we would today call dad jokes. And he would tell a lot of those. Kids under five were seated near the exit so that when they got scared, they could leave more easily. Mike's response to the audience when a kid would be screaming and, and leaving, uh, Mike said he would say, of course, not everyone agrees with that last statement that I made. When I was scheduled to give my first show in 1975, and I was getting ready for it and setting up everything, and Mike was just leaving for the day. And he said, your first show? And he started to, to try to tell me all sorts of things that could go wrong during a show, which was fun. I mean, it was sort of a big brotherly kind of ribbing, but I, I knew he wouldn't have done that unless he really felt I could handle it. And he was really just a, a great role model. He was a great mentor for me. He did not stake himself to be, I'm a mentor, you're my mentee. He wasn't like that at all. He was just, hey, what's up? How you doing? Very down to earth. I was thinking this morning about this rare combination of, of strength and determination and will that he had in combination with his gentleness, his humor, his compassion. And that combination is really rare in individuals. And it, I, I don't know, to me, it sort of defines who Mike was. In the mid nineties, I ended up working uh, here in San Francisco at the uh, Astronomical Society of the Pacific. Started out as the manager of the education department, started building up the education side of the society a little more, became executive director of the ASP around 2001. He sort of familiarized astronomy and made it accessible more to the general public than it was before. Probably my most fun project that I worked on with Mike, which was called Sky Rangers. So it was training park rangers with the kinds of tools that we'd already developed for amateur astronomers to bring that to their public at the park. And we wanted to expand that vision to include the precious resource of the dark night skies. We decided to partner with the SETI Institute. And so we became the outreach arm of SOFIA. That project started in 1996. They're now flying teachers on SOFIA, teachers and other educators, including planetarium people. They will transfer their enthusiasm to untold thousands of students. He started to see that the ASP's sole mission should be education, that the world really needed to become more scientifically literate, and astronomy was the tool that would make that happen. And that is a tremendous legacy for Mike.